All right, you guys. Um, so today's show, of course, we're going to be talking about, you know, the law, contracts, copyrights, and trademarks. But I always kind of like to get a little bit back, more background on my guests. So um, can you tell us what made you decide of all aspects of law? What about this portion of law made you decide? So this is what I'm going to focus on and this is what I'm going to do. Great question. I wanted to help business owners ever since. Like, first of all, I knew I was going to be a lawyer, like in middle school. When I got to high school, I knew I wanted to help business owners. And so when I graduated and took the bar um, and I opened up my own practice, I kind of went astray from that just a little bit and started doing everything under the sun. But I wanted to go back and help business owners. I always wanted to go back to that. And trademarks, um, basically intellectual property is an area of law where one you don't see very many black attorneys and you definitely don't see very many black female attorneys, especially at the time when I decided to niche down to that. And we need representation because we have a history of having our intellectual property taken from us because we don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And so I believe I, I strongly, strongly believe that if we are going to succeed as a community, as a black community, that we have to have our own businesses. We have to have our own land. We have to have our own businesses so that we can employ our own people. One of those aspects is understanding and identifying and protecting your intellectual property. That's why I do what I do. Okay, I love it, I love it. And you know what? That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, because I actually, um, when you t initially told me that it was what you were gonna go in, I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting, you know, because you're so used to people being like defense attorneys and things of that mm -hmm. sort. So that is really cool, and I like that it's broad. Mm -hmm. I like that it's broad. So you guys, you're in Dallas, you can still use her because is broad and why is trademark broad? Why is it not state to state like other laws? Like why is that? Because it's, it's under federal. So trademarks, the trademark law that I practice is federal. Is um so you can only get it if your business or your goods or services are available in multiple states. So anytime you have something dealing with multiple states, it's federal. And then copyrights don't actually exist in a state law on the state law level. They were enacted by Congress, so they are automatically federal. So you can't even bring a federal lawsuit unless you for copyrights unless you have federal registration. Okay, all right, makes sense. Thank you for that clarification because I always um, want, wanted to know that. So, um, we're gonna discuss B. Simone. So I do, uh, let's see, can I uh, switch the screen here? Well, I probably don't need to, but so we got um, B. Simone, that's what we're gonna discuss. So. She is a renowned media personality, comedian, rapper, and artist who recently released her book, Baby Girl, Manifest the Life You Want. And it pretty much became a topic of uh, plagiarism scandal. According to an article on Complex.com, a, a, a some, well, smaller content creator, um, goes by the name of Boss Girl Bloggers, was affected by this scandal. B. Simone released a statement earlier this month that the book was outsourced by the company and she apologized. So I have a two-part question for you. One, how can smaller content creators protect themselves? And two, how can celebrities like B. Simone avoid making the same mistake? Okay, great. So the first part of that question is how can smaller businesses or content creators protect themselves? You always have to understand what intellectual property is. That's one of the challenges that I see now for content creators and new business owners like B. Simone. They don't understand what copyrights protect. So copyrights protect work that are in original fixed form. And the person that owns the, is the person that actually brought it to life. So... For instance, B. Simone said that she outsourced the writing of her book. Unless there's something written in a contract, that outsource, that that book could be owned by the person that actually wrote it, unless the contract says otherwise. So when you go and get a logo, the person that brought that logo to life, unless they are an employee doing the scope, doing the work in the scope of their employment, that person owns that logo. So you have to understand basics like that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, like I said, we mentioned before, is well, let me start, let me let me say this. From the moment that work is in a fixed tangible form, so created, you have a common law copyright interest in that work. So that's why when people talk about having a poor man's copyright where you basically take it and mail it to yourself and all the other foolishness, like you don't have to do all that. Mm -hmm. From the moment you create it, you have a copyright interest in that work. However, like I mentioned earlier, 
you can't bring a federal lawsuit unless you have federal registration. That's one of the benefits to it. Another benefit to federal registration is that if something like this happens when and you bring the federal lawsuit, you can have statutory damages, which means that you don't have to. Damages means basically the money that you can be compensated because of the infringement. And so if you have statutory damages, that means they have a set amount, a dollar amount that you don't. So you don't even have to prove it. You have to prove the infringement, but you don't have to prove the actual loss. Like how much money did you actually lose mm -hmm. because B. Simone infringed on your copyrights? Like you don't have to actually prove that with statutory damages. But when you don't um, don't benefit from statutory damages, then you have to go and prove that. And that can be really expensive. And sometimes you don't even get the same amount of money as you would if you were getting statutory damages because the loss might not, the actual loss might not be that much. So the first thing to protect yourself is to know what copyrights are and what they protect. To register your work, register your work. Um, and what that does is, even though you have this common law interest in there, it's, it's a record in the government database showing when the work was created, who the owner is, so that if you have to, if someone infringes on it, then you have some recourses because, so that is one scenario of infringement. Another one is, and I saw this a couple of years ago where someone wrote a book, and then I think someone like Netflix or some studio turned that book into a movie. Well, as a copyright owner, you have the exclusive right to create derivatives of that work. So that's why that's why copyrights and intellectual property are so valuable. It's not just about a sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. It's about everything that you can do with that. So if you write a book and now someone wants a movie, make a movie out of it, guess what they got to come to? They can't just say, oh, I like this book and turn it into a movie themselves. They got to come to you for it, meaning you get to dictate how much money you want to turn this book into a movie. That's another oh, wow. Thing revenue. So that's why, that. <coughs> yeah. that's why it's so valuable. And then, and the answer is the same for like B. Simone, like what can they do? What was the, what was the second part of the question? Like what can um, they do? Um, what can um, celebrities like B. Simone do to avoid making the same mistake? And I'm gonna say this, we're not going to limit it to just celebrities like B. Simone. We're gonna make it anyone that's in business because I've seen so many people, you know, a few years ago, the Shade Room's uh, Facebook page was shut down. She had like 4 million followers. It was shut down because she kept getting reported for copyright violations because she kept taking pictures off of like other people's websites and using them on her website, not knowing that that's copyright infringement. So yeah. the number one thing that you can do is understand the basics of copyrights and trademarks so that you don't have these type of things happen. Like, And another thing too, when you're outsourcing, in that contract that B. Simone had, you won't, if they're going to write something for you or create, whether it's that book or whether it's a logo or whatever it is, you want a clause in there that's going to make them, hold them accountable, that they are creating original work for you. You want to hold them accountable because if not, then all the heat's going to come on you. Yeah. So you want to have, you hold them accountable that they're creating original work for you and that if the work is not um, original, then they will stand in the gap for you. They will take the heat. 